by the grace of the Lord let's go to chapter 5 let's go to the gospel of John chapter 5 After this, the Gospel according to John, chapter 5. After this, there was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there is in Jerusalem by the sheep gate a pool, which is called in Hebrew Beth Bethesda, having five porches. In this lay a great multitude of sick people, blind, lame, paralyzed, waiting for the moving of the water. For an angel went down in a certain time the pool and stirred up the water. Then whoever stepped in first after the stirring of the water was made well of whatever disease he had. Now a certain man was there who had an infirmity thirty-eight years. <clears throat> when Jesus saw him lying there and knew he already been in that condition a long time, he said to him, Do you want to be made well? The sick man answered him, Sir, I have no man to put him in the pool. I want the water stirred up. But while I'm coming, another steps down before me. Jesus said to him, Rise, take up your bed, and walk. And immediately the man was made well, took up his bed, and walked. And that day was a Sabbath. The Jews therefore said to him, who was cured, It is a Sabbath. It is not lawful for you to carry your bed. He answered them, He who made me well said to me, Take up your bed and walk. Then they asked him, Who is the man who said to you, Take up your bed and walk? But the one who was healed did not know who it was, for Jesus had withdrawn and multitude being in that place. Afterward, Jesus found them in the temple and said to him, See, you have been made well. Say no more, lest the worst thing come upon you. The man departed and told the Jews that it was Jesus who had made him well. For this reason, the Jews persecuted Jesus, sought to kill him, because he had done these things on the Sabbath. But Jesus answered them, My father has been working until now, and I have been working. Therefore the Jews sought all the more to kill him, because he not only broke the Sabbath, but also said that God was his father making himself equal with God. Then Jesus answered said to them, Most assuredly I say to you, the Son can do nothing of himself. But what he sees the Father do, but whatever he does, the Son also does in like matter. For the Father loves the Son and shows him all things that he himself does. He will show him greater works than these that you may marvel. For as the Father raises the dead and gives life to them, even so the Son gives life to whom he will. For the Father judges no one, but has committed all judgment to the Son. that all should honor the Son just as they honor the Father. He who does not honor the Son does not honor the Father who sent him. Most assuredly, I say to you, he who hears my word and believes in him who sent me has everlasting life, so now come the judgment has passed from death into life. Most assuredly, I say to you, the hour is coming, now is, when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God. 
and those who hear will live. For as the Father has life in himself, so he has granted the Son to have life in himself. He has given him authority to execute judgment also, because he is the Son of Man. Don't marvel at this. For the hour is coming in, which all who are in the grace will hear his voice, and come forth. Those who have done good, the resurrection of life. Those who have done evil, the resurrection of condemnation. I can of myself do nothing, as I hear a judge. And my judgment is righteous, because I do not seek my own will, but the will of the Father who sent me. Amen. This is a great secret of the person who has the right judgment. He considers, discerns, and judges with the judgment of God, before God and man. That's the uh, righteous human being. Of course, whoever believes that Jesus Christ died for his sins, and he arose him for his justification, he's just in the eyes of God. But he may lose that justice, and that righteousness, very easily. And the only way that we received by grace to preserve it till the end, to seek not our own will, but the will of the one who uh, the one who sent us was the Lord Jesus Christ, because the Lord Jesus Christ confessed, as the Father sent me, I send you. As the Father sent me to practice the righteousness of God. I'm sending you to practice my own righteousness, and in the end, my the, this, your decision making will be just if you seek, if you seek always the will of the one who sent you, the Lord Jesus Christ. This is a certainty of the just person. Jehoiakim was not though but Jeremiah was he saw he saw the will of God and he sent him the question is if we to practice injustice we have to forget our own plans our own uh, will when it's uh, when it's outside the will of God on the one who sent me the one who sent us, Lord Jesus Christ. This is the greatest secret because there will be times, there will be times when we're going to decide what we want to do. There will be times we're going to be thinking what we need to do. There will be times in our times. Now we're going to judge that we need to do this. Before, if we, if we discern by our own will, understanding with our mind, And we're going to lose when we decide and consider 
in a position from Christ. And there's only one way to guarantee that we are deciding in harmony with the will of God by by always reconciling our decisions with the Word of God. Let's receive good doctrine to know how God works. Once him commit Then he made a decision. And he met at Jerusalem. Before Jerusalem, there was and uh, there was now a pool. In Beth Bethesda, which means a house of mercy, and then by grace, the Lord, He had left. He had allowed His mercy to be revealed and His power, as. An angel would come and stir up the wa the waters of that pool. Whoever will fall in, will step in first, the stand of the world is made well of whatever disease he had. The result was there was a great crowd of people who were um, sick people, blind, lame, paralyzed, were waiting for the moving of the water. They were ready. They were re trying to fall in first, so in order to be healed. The Lord went through So you went through that and Beth Thesta and there was a man. There was a person who was sick, who was alone. This is the first main point that somebody who was in absolute loneliness. Everybody had abandoned him. He had no one to hope to. There was no one to help him. He couldn't set his eyes. He couldn't say, help me out. I cannot fall in there. There was no. He was there by himself. And his absolute loneliness now the Lord came and helped him out. And dear brethren, here we need to emphasize it is very important to be alone in the eyes of the Lord. And alone a person can be when he has no one near him or her physically but you can always be alone by faith the word of God. What does it mean alone? There is no one else that I can trust and lean on than Christ. There was no one who knew about the condition of that um, disabled person and we have a great opportunity here to, to decide in the midst of many brethren to be for you to be alone you and I how is this 
And what is this going to happen? The Lord shows us the way. When you pray, enter into your chamber. Close the door. And there are two. Kneel down. And call about the name of the Lord. And call about your Heavenly Father. In your mind, though, there wouldn't be, you know, they have no thoughts. At that moment, you need to be indeed alone, body, soul, and spirit, as he was. The Lord drew near him because he was alone. And he asked him, Do you want to become healthy? He didn't ask him. He didn't ask him, Do you believe that I can heal you? The question is, Do you become healthy? I want to. That's why I'm sitting here for 38 years. But I have no one else when the water is stirred up. Many times I saw the water has been stirred up. When I'm drawing near in my weakness, somebody falls in first. What was his problem? He had his own plan for his healing. If only had a human being to help me out. If only had a human being to help me out. But no one. Because many times we have in our heart, and by grace the Lord has given us this message, no human being cares for me. There is no one who to call me. No one cares for me. He says that in his sadness. But God, when you're alone, is next to me to help me out. To say glory in the name of the Lord. Glory. The Lord is coming for me. He couldn't come and seek the Lord Jesus Christ, but we can. So, dear brethren, I repeat there are two rules of loneliness. When no one, when you're in the hospital, when, when you're alone and you're on the way, there are times of loneliness. If you're in the midst of many relatives, children, Parents, watch out. Become, be alone by faith. This poor person by himself that was. N there was help from no one till the Lord Jesus Christ came. But by you and I, if you make this decision, all by faith, watch out. You're not alone. 
the Lord Jesus Christ is always next to you. Lord Jesus Christ didn't come to him. Uh, the great difference is his calm is always next to us. Isn't that astonishing? You're never alone. And when you drive the car, when the other one is about to run into you, the Lord is next to you. Do you want to become healthy? Do you want me to save you? Don't make your own plans. Let the conscience of Christ and the plan of Christ who understands you that you are alone to see what he's going to do to you. Do you want to become a health? I can. I've no one. You want to come next to me to push him? I have no one. Many times the angel has come in and stirred up the water, stir up the waters of um, the pool of Siloam, but nothing has happened. Oh, but oh, but she, the, What do you hope for? And you're waiting just in case somebody comes. In case somebody pities me. In case somebody draws near to me. In case somebody calls me. I'm very alone. Do you want to become healthy? Let me say this better. Do you always want to be blessed? Do you want to be the absolutely blessed person? I'll never be alone. Even, even if you're by faith, Christ is going to be next to you. Be alone by faith. Call the Lord Jesus Christ to be next to you. Wherever you are, your soul is in danger. Wherever you are, wherever you are, you're not in danger. Christ is next to you. That's what we want. And the Lord now looked at him and asked him, Do you want to become healthy? Or do you want to become well? And before he even answered, take up your bed and walk. On the same moment, Arise, take up your bed and walk. After he heard that word, immediately the man was made well, took up his bed and walked. Now people draw near to him. People would not go to him before. The Jews they saw that he was lifting up his bed. And it happened to be the day of Sabbath. And it happened to be Sabbath, but it wasn't a coincidence. Why did this miracle have to happen Sabbath? In order to bring cause, to bring cause for salvation to those people who are sticklers to the Mosaic law. Why the Lord sent his written word to Jehoiakim through Jeremiah and Barak in case Jehoiakim hears and repents. What is he going to do now? Is he going to say, Welcome, Barak, who did this? Call him. Call him. So, dear brethren, God cares for those who are in opposition. He, all his life, Jeremiah, he was the emissary of God. I can let me say this as understood, instead of saying the way God told me. Who was the emissary of the long suffering of God? Why? 
he used to send them everywhere since a little year because he loves his people he loves his people but why the Lord Jesus Christ healed the paralytic on the Sabbath I mean, in order for the word of God to come to those why is he caring for the lonely people first of all because they were in despair a second those people are going to end up becoming the emissaries of the Lord because they have experience because the emissary of the Lord is not a theology that went to a school the emissary of the Lord he's the one who has known realization of the Lord Jesus Christ his Redeemer and Savior that's a Christian that's the one who do, with whom God is pleased here's the one that God chooses the lonely that God is going to receive experiences of our eternal life in order to confess with all that power of his heart that's why a Christian has a testimony, a confession of faith what did Christ do in his life Apostle Paul, wherever he would go he would always start this confession how did did Christ believe his life how did Christ believe his life uh, how did he change his life it's not for giving for you to lift up your bed and walk why the one he healed him the one who healed me he didn't say who healed you Who is the one who told you to do this? It's not who is the one who healed you, but they asked him, who is the one who told you to walk on Sabbath and carry your bed? And the Lord Jesus healed him and left that place. And the paralytic did not even have a chance to meet Jesus but later Jesus is going to come the Lord Jesus performed a miracle here but that's the main point is salvation of the soul of the paralytic so he may have eternal life this is what the Lord wants to achieve in our lives to have internal future eternal future is the only one who has who has personal experience this is a message to the gospel is our confession that the Lord Jesus Christ three years in Arabia there's no teacher to teach the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ on the Lord Jesus Christ using his ministry so we don't have gratitude who 
who taught me the gospel? Brother Louis. Uh, I thank the Lord for my brother Louis. And not the other brethren. The one who taught me the gospel is the Lord Jesus Christ. We are all, we all going to be taught by the Holy Spirit. The, our instructor is the Lord Jesus Christ who uses people not so that we may hope to people you know to glorify God for people don't I have gratitude for my brother Louis of course he passed away now one that doesn't die is the Lord Jesus Christ he's always going to be with us always when when in our loneliness we're going to hope in Him. We're going to cry out to Him. We're not going to make decisions. We're not going to make our own plans. Our own plan is, is anyone going to come to throw me the, in the lake? No one. No one is going to help me. No one is going to help you. Just don't hope. Neither two men or a relative, a friend. Only the Lord Jesus Christ. I know the Lord Jesus Christ is able to help you out. He will help you. When you, you reject your own plans. Do you want to become healthy? I don't have a person. Can you push me in? But I can, I'm able to heal you. Glory to God. We thank the Lord for everything. How important it is to seek our loneliness with the Lord. I want to enjoy our loneliness with the Lord. Are you, are you driving the car by yourself? The Lord is next to you. I remember once I used to go from the area of A or the area of Pedro. I was thinking, am I, am I making a mistake? The Lord is coming, uh, and He's not coming. Do you think maybe they make a mistake? I was new, a new believer in the car. All of a sudden I heard a boop, a noise, and I, I saw the Lord Jesus next to me. He started teaching me. I remember when you were young, Where would m your mom put put food so you won't spoil? I would say in the special before refrigerator device. And he said, "Remember, the knowledge is going to multiply." How did your parents swim in on the beach? on the beach I used to I remember my parents used to tell me that men and women they would they were sitting differently and he uh, told me sinfulness would multiply remember how long did it take for your aunt to leave and go to America it used to take a month from Greece to America. People will travel over the earth. I uh, was still in my love. Next to me was the Lord Jesus. But on my own, I was making idiotic thoughts. Just think when the Lord came to me. They want to learn the truth. He didn't tell me this, but I'm saying this now. 
Tell me all the truth. I'm in the church of uh, the uh, the church of, uh, of Pirgo because I was in a loss. I'm li I only had this experience once. I kneeled down. As soon as I kneeled down, there was a prophecy. This is what the Lord says. Behold, I'm coming quickly. And my heart, Christ, it's the Lord. Dear brethren, let us seek our loneliness, but not alone, but with the Lord. Let us seek our loneliness. Let us not seek company. Let us consider. Nobody thinks me. Nobody calls me. Nobody loves me. Nobody cares. You are blessed by the Lord. Even understand the Lord is coming because you are alone. Especially if you call him, what he's going to do? He's going to flood your life with joy. He's going to heal you. Do you want to become healthy? And we do that, we're saying we want to come, Lord Jesus. I have no man. I don't want to have another man. I want to come, Lord Jesus, please. How beautiful it is to enjoy your loneliness and solitude with the Lord. He didn't know who healed him, but the Lord drew near to him. From now on, and revealed to him the cause of his disease, which was sinfulness. Does he know everything? Yes, he does know everything. Did he rebuke him? No, he exhorted him to do the right thing repent. Sinfulness has consequences. <laughs> the uh, bad Christian has an evil future. But there is the only way of loneliness with the Lord Jesus Christ. All of your loneliness. In your job, in your house, in the midst of a lot of people, the relatives who love you. Or if you want to enjoy the blessing of the Lord, remain alone. In the midst of many people, can you be alone in the midst of many people? As long as you set your eyes within you. To pray with, within you, to be filled in the Holy Spirit. And the Lord Jesus Christ is going to be next to you and not only these difficult circumstances whoever calls the love of Jesus Christ will be saved but even more and the good conditions to call upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ who's going to come and Strengthen you. He's going to correct you. The most important thing is. As the Father sent me. 
I'm sending you. He's going to send you. He's going to keep sending you. If you learn. If I learn to live alone with Christ. In the midst of many people. Oh, the Lord Jesus Christ and Him and Him crucified. Okay. You're useful to Him. You like he, he likes you. He's gonna keep sending you. When He's gonna send you, you're not gonna be alone. He's gonna be with you. He's going to be with you. He's going to follow you. He's going to fill your spirit with your spirit. The message today is reveals to us a new way of life. Well, that's not left and right. Neither hoping, neither judging, neither is always seeking where the Lord Jesus Christ dwells. How beautiful it is to learn to live with Christ to learn to walk with Christ to learn to sleep with Christ upon your entrance and exit I'm going to be with you in your house I'm going to be with you when if you're with me they understood and let us understand how important it is is for Christ to be with me and I to be with Christ always always in order to be with Christ always be alone with him to be alone with me who is that person Blessed be the man hopes in the Lord and all the Lord. That person who will be like a tree planted by the waters. He's not going to see. His foliage. He's gonna always going to be blessed. He's always going to bless the Lord under any circumstances. Only Him and only the Lord. He's always going to do have good fruit and good fruit need to remain. May we accept this teaching, the doctrine of solitude. But not as monks in a monastery, but as a monk within the world. I'm not praying for you to take them out of the world and to confess the Lord Jesus Christ and Him crucified. Help us, Lord, to be alone with Christ in the midst of many people, in the midst of uh, and the church. 
Always be alone. The Lord Jesus Christ. Especially. Let's not allow. Don't allow thoughts. Let's always. Let's always be in Christ. Always to Christ. Do you want to become healthy? Lift up your bed.